Hi boys and girls, welcome back. I'm so happy to see you. Today I'm going to read Circumference and the First Round Table. Now you might catch me trying to use a few accents. I'm not very good, but I'll try, they're kind of fun. Before I start reading, I'm going to say a riddle. How does an octopus go into battle? Think about it. Giving you a clue there. Circumference in the First Round Table, A Math Adventure by Cindy Neuschwander and Wayne Gehan. Long ago in a land known as Camelot, there lived many knights and ladies. Their ruler was a mighty but gracious man named King Arthur. During many years of peace and good harvest, the people lived happily. The trouble began when they saw the army of their neighbors to the north gathering at the border. These people were known as circumscribers. Looked as if they might be preparing to make war. King Arthur called upon his bravest and most trusted knights to plan what to do. The knights rode as fast as they could to the king's castle. Circumference lived by, so his family came with him. Circumference was married to Lady Di, who came from the land of a meter. They had a son named Radius. Radius was very small and quite young, but his keen mind and boundless energy more than made up for what he lacked in height and age. After the first day of meeting with all the king's knight, Circumference sat with Lady Di. Oh, he groaned, my throat hurts. I have to shout to be heard at the other end of the long rectangular table. Everyone has to shout. The king is very upset. Well, why don't you fix the table, suggested Lady Di. How can we do that, Circumference asked. Well, said Lady Di, you could cut it in half. Look, here's a drawing of the table. It has two long sides and two short sides. If you cut it in half and put the two halves side by side, you will have a table with four equal sides. What shape did it go from and to? Lady Da, what a good idea. Circumference called for the carpenter, Geo of Metri. Geo began work immediately. The next day, the new table was ready. Everyone commented on the wonderful square shaped. However, another problem arose. At the corner of each table, the knights whispered to each other. When someone else was talking, Sir Galahad exclaimed, King Arthur, how can we meet to discuss a solution when people talk secretly to each other? Sir Galahad is correct, King Arthur responded. We have come for here to talk of defending our land against the circumscribers, not to talk in secrecy. After the meeting, King Arthur told Circumference a new table was needed. That night, Circumference told Lady Di about the problem with the square table. Lady Di thought a moment and then said, what if we cut the square table diagonally? We could put the two halves together and make a diamond. She drew a diagram and said, the king could sit at one end of the table and you could sit at the opposite end. Everyone would be close enough to hear, but the knights would not be in any tight corners. Do you think it's going to work? After seeing the plan, Circumference agreed it was a good idea. Geo the carpenter said, in carpentry class, they called that shape a parallelogram. <clears throat> I will have the table ready by the morrow. The next day, Sir Lancelot, Sir Gawain, were amazed to see a table in the shape of a parallelogram. The others liked it, but King Arthur was not happy sitting at the sharp point. The king let the knights have the jousting practice and sword play while he spoke with circumference. Circumference, the point of the table sticks into me like a sword. We need to think about ways to prevent war, but this table makes me feel like fighting. Can you fix it? I will do my best, sire said circumference. 
That afternoon, he stood by the field and watched the others joust. It was a beautiful day with blue skies and flags flapping in the breeze. Sir Ga Gawain's flag was blue with white cross. Sir Lancelot's flag was green with lions and Sir Torres' flag was green with an eagle. The flags were similar in shape. They were all triangles. That's it, said the conference, a triangular table. Do you think it's going to work? Circumference called Geo and explained. Geo said, if we cut the parallelogram table in half, that would leave two triangles. One triangle might be too small. So they measured and proposed the triangular table and realized that four people could not fit on each side. Geo, let's think some more, said Circumference, and he went to discuss the shapes with Lady Di. Yes, said Lady Di, the triangles would be too small. So cut off the corners like this and make an octagon. Looks like we'll solve the problem. How many sides does an octagon have? Will it work? When the knights sat at the octagon table, each one wanted to sit all on one side, all to himself. Eight sides and 12 knights. Who would share the side with another? <laughs> they agreed the king should have a little side all to himself because he was their leader. But that left seven sides and 11 different people. Knights, let there be orders, said King Arthur calmly. We need to remember that we are here for the defense of our land. How can we talk at this table with its, its problem of corners and sides circumference? Have the carpenter build a table shaped like an egg, and perhaps then we will behave more like a flock. I guess Athena likes the story too. Circumference drew up the plans for an oval, oval table for Geo. This table is going to be harder to build since it has snow straight edges, said Geo. I will begin it at once. When the knights met again, they were all impressed by the oval table. Sir Lancelot suggested that they raise their goblets and drink a toast. All of the king's knights raised their goblets, but there was a great commotion from the ends of the table. The knights at the end of the oval table bumped into the king as they raised their goblets. No one had enough room. Some of the knights began to argue. Then King Arthur shouted, Stop! I'll leave me until tomorrow. Except for circumference. After talking to King Arthur, circumference returned home, discouraged once again. Radius piped up, Father, when I have a problem I cannot solve, I do something else for a while. Why don't we go for a ride? That afternoon, Circumference, Radius, and Lady Di of a meter went riding. No one said much until Radius shouted, Father, look, a tree has fallen over. So it has, observed the knight. you see, Father? There's your table. Lady Di got off her horse for a closer look. She stood on her tiptoes and stretched her arm up as high as it could go. Her fingertips just met the upper edge of the trunk. It should be big enough, she said. This part is as tall as I can reach, and the wood seems to be of good quality. Circumference summoned Geo to cut a cross section of the trunk to make it into a tabletop. Leave the bark on the outside edge, he told Geo. I like the rough feel. Geo and his helpers sawed through the huge tree trunk. Then they hoisted the heavy slab onto an ox cart, and off they went to Geo's workshop. Geo worked all night building the new table. Do you think this one's going to work? When the knights met the next day, the table was finished. Everyone was content means happy. No one shouted or whispered. No one felt cornered or trapped. No one was poked in the stomach and no one felt squished. Everyone had an equal position around the table. As they talked, they decided the best plan was try to make peace with their neighbors. King Arthur was so pleased that he announced they would celebrate that night. Soon everyone was enjoying music, dancing, and a banquet. Suddenly the music stopped. A messenger rushed in and handed a sealed parchment to King Arthur. The king read it and smiled. 
Ladies, knights, and guests, I have excellent news. The circumscribers are not planning an attack. They only want to measure the area of their kingdom. There will be peace in our land. cheered till the king held up his hand for silence to one of these knights who have gathered at this table to save our kingdom let them henceforth be known as the knights of the round table let us thank sir comfrance and lady Di and their son radius they made this round table possible everyone cheered furthermore because lady Di of a meter has a reach that is equal to the distance across the table, we will name this measurement for her. We will call it the diameter. I am proud of Radius too, uh, added King Arthur. Someday he will become a fine knight. He may still be small, but he has tall ideas. Everyone nodded and clapped. Let us call this small measurement from the center of the circle to its edge, the radius. Finally, let us not forget our clever circumference. Since it was his idea to leave the bark on the outside edge of the table, we will name the outside of any circle after him. Let us call the outside of a circle the circumference. Circumference bowed to the king. Everyone rose from their seats and began cheering and whistling and stomping their feet. It was the happiest celebration that anyone could remember. And that's the end. Did you notice how they tried to teach you some math in here? Now we have a fun science experiment that kind of has something to do with a circle or circumference. Hi, boys and girls. I hope you're ready for a science experiment today. It's something, if you're in my classroom, we've done it once before in the classroom. We're going to make a marker bot. Now, what you'll need is an electric toothbrush now. I find these at the Dollar Tree, and guess how much they cost? A dollar. So you'll need these, an electric toothbrush. This one comes with a AA battery. Some markers, tape, and paper. The first thing you're going to need to do is open the toothbrush. I forgot one other thing you're going to need. A pool noodle or maybe a toilet paper holder or something, but I find a pool noodle works the best because it really holds in the motor. Now I've taken out my toothbrush, put the battery to the side, and I'm going to take off the bottom part where the battery goes. Just gonna pull it out. Green, put it to the side. Now, the motor is up in here and you just kinda of have to hit it. And look, the motor and the other side of the battery holder comes out. Now, I'm going to make sure that the connection is there, the metal's touching metal, and I'm going to tape it together. I'm taking a piece of tape and I'm taping it together so the metal touches the metal here and the connection stays. Put the tape on here, wrap it around, and these two pieces should stay together. Then I'm gonna take the colored part, the other part of the battery holder, and take my battery. I'm gonna find the positive end. Now the po positive end has a plus sign on it, like an addition sign. I'm going to put it down into my battery holder and put the negative side into the other. Then I'm gonna take the metal and metal. It's gonna make a connection so the energy can flow from the battery to the motor. I'm gonna to touch them together. Look, you can already see the battery, the motor going. I'm gonna stop it. On the top of it, you'll notice there's a switch. I'm gonna turn it off because I don't want it to move right now. I'm gonna, now, I'm gonna take another piece of tape and tape the two metal pieces together and the two battery holders together so they don't come apart. Now I have one big unit and I'm ready to put it inside my pool noodle. I'm gonna put the spinning part inside 
and leave the on and off switch out. Now I've laid my tape down and I'm going to put the markers on them about two inches above the tape for each one. One, I'm gonna to try to make them as even as possible at the top, you'll see why. Now I'm going to take my pool noodle, put it in the middle. I'm gonna leave the part with the on and off switch on top and the lids to the markers on the other side. I've wrapped my markers around and I'm trying to make them as even as I can. Turn it over just to make sure it works. And I've noticed a couple are too close together so I'm gonna fix that right now. Almost all of my markers are even and I put it on my paper. I'm going to turn it on in just a second. Let's watch and see what happens. The switch is on the top here. I'm going to turn it on and hopefully my marker bot will work. It's moving and it's making a circle and the circumference is showing. Let me stop the video and show you what it looks like from the top. My markers are making circles. Let's see if I pick it up and move it over here. Will it do it again? Yes, it will. Now I notice not all of them are touching, so I may have to go and fix a few. But that's what we do as scientists. We make something and fix it and make it work again. Okay, boys and girls, I have two sets of scribble bots now or marker bots. I'm gonna turn on one. And then I used some materials from yesterday, the balloon, and taped it onto the other one. Let's see what happens. Oh, we lost the balloon. It's okay. We still have two scribble butts going. Ooh, one's making a bigger circle than the other. Why do you think that is? Show me the designs you can make. Please email me and let me know what you've done. Well, boys and girls, that was so much fun. I love making the scribble bots. I'll put the directions up for you. Look at the, all the designs our, my scribble bots made. Big circles, smaller circles, repeating circles. Hey, circles in circumference, the outside. Must have the same root word. I really enjoyed reading circumference and the first round table. I hope you did too. That takes me to our riddle. How does an octopus go into battle? Fully armed, of course. Get it? He has eight arms. I can't wait to see you again tomorrow. I look forward. You're amazing, wonderful, and you're ready to go into battle to learn because you are my learning warriors. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.